I've had some good days, and I've had some hills to climb. I Won't Complain is the name of the song. It's one of Sharice Brown's favorite songs. It's a song her aunt and foster mom loves as well. Sharice spent the first 14 years of her life in foster care. Her aunt had decided to take her in. She kind of struggled because there was five of us in the home and it was one of her. So, you know, she had a job and everything, but still, when it comes to five kids, it's like, you need the support. But since, you know, they think that we're placed with our relative, that it's easier. It's like, oh, it's okay, they're with family. So they don't need that much support, that much care. So whenever my mom would call the county, they would kind of give us the run around, like, oh, we'll, we'll figure something out, but, you know, we placed them with you because you're their family, so we think that you that they're okay, that they're good. But mom, she kind of struggled sometimes, uh, but she never really let it show. But I, I could see it in her face that, you know, it was it was worrying her. Charisse and her aunt persevered and made it. Her aunt adopted her at age 14. But not every story like this has a happy ending. We are one of the few states in the nation that treats relative caregivers different from the standpoint of support for foster kids. The whole kin gap, the gap between what a child would get if they are with a stranger parent as opposed to someone who's a, a blood kin is huge in California. And it's just a, a part of not supporting these kids to grow up uh, with the best resources possible. Assemblymember Ken Cooley, chair of the Assembly Select Committee on Foster Care, has introduced legislation to change that. AB 985 seeks to provide relative guardians equal access to benefits as a non-relative guardian. AB 1882 ensures that these relative guardians know what's available to them in terms of benefits within the system and how to access them. It also makes those children eligible for CalWORKs funding and other financial and educational programs. Assemblymember Cooley knows firsthand the importance of love and stability in the lives of these children. You know, I'm a grandparent to a foster child. It's very important to me that kids have support and love to grow up. As a 17-year-old foster child, Rochelle Rubio knows exactly what Cooley is talking about. Teenagers really do need that protection. They need to feel it, they need to think it, because without that, then there's no trust. And if there's no trust, then how are you gonna feel that way, you know? How are you gonna feel like they're gonna protect you? How do you know, like, where and when to start? Another concern of Assemblymember Cooley is the connection between the foster care system and human trafficking and sexual abuse. Clearly, the foster care system has become a pipeline for uh, human trafficking. And it's appalling to think that kids that have a rough time starting out then get pulled into the orbit of this tragedy. Assembly Bill 883 hopes to enhance protections for vulnerable children by creating a pilot program in Sacramento County, among others, to prevent child sexual abuse. All of my good days. The issue of protecting and supporting children in the foster care system is so important for Sharice Brown that one month before her 21st birthday, <laughs> she decided to spend a few days advocating for herself and others like her at the state capitol. You have to always know that your good days outweigh your bad days. So, like, you shouldn't complain because eventually, you know, the sun's gonna rise and shine on your side. This report was produced by the Speaker's Office of Member Services.